Uh, meantime, you see in the small box there, a press conference underway in Minneapolis. We want to take you right there. There are members of the Somali community there. Uh, there was a, an attack taking place um, in St. Cloud at a shopping mall. Nine people were injured in a stabbing. The suspect was shot dead. Investigators are not revealing anything about the suspect thus far, but members of this community say they wanted to initiate their own press conference. Let's listen in on what they have to say. And this community in many different ways. Um, the Somali community have been touched by this uh, incident. Uh, first of all, our solidarity goes uh, to the families who are affected, and we condole with those victims who have been uh, hurt last night by the individual, suspected individual. Uh, we uh, condemn it, uh, the strongest uh, word we can possibly do. And in our, in, in, in our faith, as a Muslim community, as a Somali, uh, we came together to condole with the greater community about the loss that we had, and the injured, and the people who are affected by this incident. But at the same time, we want to condemn, strongly condemn, any terrorist act. Uh, we don't agree, we categorically condemn any terrorist, um, terrorism act that happens within America or in the world. <coughs> we don't believe in violence, or solving problems in violence, and we don't agree anyone who takes Amara to his hands and hurt other people. We don't agree with that and we strongly uh, condemn that and I will leave the rest for, uh, for my colleagues to follow. Thank you very much, uh, Abdul Kulene, for your leadership. Uh, up next is Jailani Hussein from Care, Minnesota. Welcome, Jailani. Uh, J A Y L A N I, last name H U S N S S E I N, the executive director for the Council on American Islamic Relations. Again, I welcome you all and thank you for being part of this press conference. Today, uh, we join our fellow Minnesotans, members of this community, to send our heartfelt condolences to the, uh, to the families and the victims of this tragedy. We are all shocked, just like you, and we are all grieving, just like you. This is an act of an individual, and we want our community to realize this fact. There are still uh, an investigation as this investigation is going on we are not clear of all of the uh, uh, aspects of this incident uh, including the connection to ISIS which there is no connection at this point uh, from the law enforcement and as well also from the community and therefore uh, we need to realize that as well uh, we are we are also uh, concerned about the potential backlash uh, to this community. Uh, we understand in St. Cloud there is more anti-Muslim organizing and we hope that they do not use this incident as a way to continue to polarize, divide and spread fear in our communities. This is a tragedy that affects all people in St. Cloud and this is an opportunity for the community to come together. One other fact that I want to make sure we understand this community, this uh, St. Cloud Muslim community, the Somali community, are hard-working individuals. There are people who are just like everybody else, woke up this morning to this tragedy and are trying to make some sense out of it. And finally, I want to reiterate uh, again how this community, the Muslim community, feels about this tragedy. We send again our sympathy and our condolences, uh, heartfelt condolences to those victims uh, we are glad to hear that many of them will be recovering uh, very shortly soon. Uh, and for those who are still in the hospital, we send again our condolences uh, to, to, to them. Uh, and finally, uh, this is a, a tragedy, uh, and we hope from this tragedy we can build a better, stronger uh, community here, a strong St. Cloud that is inclusive and welcoming for all people. Thank you. Thank you, Jailani Hussein from CARE. Up next is one uh, of our community leaders that has been in this community for a long, long time. 
think he's one of the first people that came to St. Cloud. Uh, his name is Mohammed Mohamud from Sasso. Uh, please, Mohammed, welcome. Thank you, Haji. Mohammed, could you spell your first and last name for us? My first name is Mohamud, M O H A M O U D. Mohammed, M O H A M E D. And I am with St. Cloud Area Somali Salvation Organization and Central Minnesota Islamic Center. We are here today uh, as Central Minnesota Somali community to express our solidarity and we are we were devastated to hear the news of St. Cloud Mall stabbing and we the Somali community of the Central Minnesota like to express our thoughts and prayers to the victim of September 17, 2016 tragedy. And also we would like to express our sympathy, empathy to the family of the deceased young man. The news of the St. Cloud Mall was shocking to the friends, relatives, and the community of the deceased. We were all shocked. We were not expecting. According to the police release, we do, we do not know the motive of that stabbing incident. Nevertheless, Central Minnesota Somali community is in distress, and we are afraid of the consequences of this incident. We will like to say loud that our community in central Minnesota has no relationship with ISIS or any other Islamic terrorist group. We were the victim of those terrorist groups, as I said 16 years ago, on the steps of our courthouse, that we were the victim of those terrorists and now we are facing again to suffer for their act. They are minorities in our faith that are misusing uh, the credibility of our faith. Islam is peace. Thank you and I pray for the victim. That was uh, Mohammed Mahmoud from Sasso. Up next is uh, a, a special uh, mother that lives in St. Cloud. Her name is Lul Hirsi. Please welcome to Lul Hirsi to the stage. Lul Hirsi is a mother for many. So please welcome her. Good afternoon. My name is Lul Hirsi, L-U-L. Last name is H-E-R-S-I. I'm here as a mother as a community member, as anybody who was outside the mall yesterday waiting to know their loved ones, if they are dead or alive. This is a tragic event. It's, a, it's been a dark day. It's a day that we will never forget, but I hope we remember it in a good way. I really want to send my condolences to the victims of yesterday, last night. As a mother of four children, my son was not at home yesterday when this happened. So I was thinking, you know, the more, and my son being there. And at, after he knocked the door and came in at 8.40, right. like then I realized as a mother again, the other people who are standing outside are also feeling the same way I was feeling. We condemn the acts of yesterday. It was an individual, and we don't know what motivated that individual. We cannot, at this time, take the hate, take over us. Let's unite as one Minnesota. Let's take love instead of hate. Let's preach the good of us, not the bad that just happens once in a while. And we don't hope for this to happen again. I said last night, not in St. Cloud, not in St. Cloud. That's what I kept on telling my kids, not in St. Cloud. But I hope my neighbors, my coworkers, my friends, my community members, my elders, and everybody else will take this into heart. And please, let's spread love instead of hate. And I will say it again, ISIS does not represent us. 
It does not represent Islam. It does not represent the Somalis. It does not represent anybody of that faith. ISIS is a different faith from Islam. ISIS has their own religion and they have their own belief. So please, as Minnesotans, as St. Cloud, let's come together and let's be one. And let's, and let's show the rest of the world. We, today, we are, all the cameras and all the news media on us, let's show them we are not what happened yesterday. We are better than that. We can do better than this St. Cloud. Please, mark, take my words in, in heart and be, and let's also condemn what happened and also, also let's come together and try to build a better community for everybody else and don't retaliate back at anybody else. All right, members of what we're told to be the Somali uh, community there, uh, leaders of the Somali community there in the Twin Cities of Minneapolis, St. Paul, uh, which by many standards is considered the Somali uh, capital of the U.S. with 60,000 uh, Somali nationals there living in that community. And this coming after police investigating the shopping mall stabbing, not revealing any details about the identity of the suspect, but these leaders saying they feel compelled uh, to send their solidarity and condolences to the families impacted by the nine who were stabbed and injured. Uh, the suspect was uh, shot dead by an off-duty police officer. Again, no more being revealed about the suspect, but reportedly earlier um, ISIS claiming responsibility, calling that suspect a soldier uh, of ISIS. Uh, police instead giving much of the credit to an off-duty police officer for having to preserve lives as seeing this suspect stab people uh, indiscriminately uh, in the shopping mall and the police officer identifying himself, then shooting and then witnesses saying, seeing this suspect uh, uh, try to get up from the ground three times before being shot dead. Of course, we're still awaiting more information about the suspect. Police say they are, uh, ha they have impounded the vehicle of that suspect and will be examining the residence of that suspect before revealing any information about the identity. But again, you're seeing and hearing a very impassioned plea from members of the Somali community there now expressing their concern too for any potential backlash. Uh, CNN's Nick Valencia has been following this story for us. And Nick, what more can you tell us about the direction of this investigation? Well, we know, uh, let's start here with this individual, that he has been identified by local media as being a member of the Somali-American community. CNN has been so far unable to verify this, uh, but his name is out there and being floated around. And uh, that's perhaps why we saw this press conference that we were just watching here live on CNN uh, from the Somali-American community, a very, as you mentioned, Fred, an impassioned plea clear and direct language that this individual who carried out this uh, stabbing attack at a mall in St. Cloud, Minnesota, does not reflect or represent uh, the thousands, the tens of thousands of, of uh, law-abiding Somali Americans there uh, in and around uh, the St. Cloud and St. Paul, Minnesota area. Uh, so far, uh, we don't have very many uh, details about this individual. The investigation is focused uh, on the uh, car that was impounded in this parking lot, as well as the search warrants that are being executed uh, at at least one residence uh, in the area. We do know that this suspect has had at least three encounters in the past with police. All of them were told by the police chief were minor traffic violations. Uh, but here's what we know happened. At about 8 p.m. Uh, last night, uh, this individual entered the Crossroads Mall and almost immediately began stabbing uh, individuals there in that mall indiscriminately. Uh, he was mentioning Allah. He was dressed in a private security uniform. We're waiting on getting details about that, whether or not he was working for this firm uh, or had worked for them in the past. He had asked at least one person, one of those victims, if he was Muslim uh, before he continued on his attack injuring nine people. Three of those people still hospitalized. We're told that none of those injuries are life-threatening, but it is a variety of people that he injured, ranging in age from 15 years old uh, to 53 years old. And at that press conference earlier, Frederica, we heard uh, not just from the mayor, but also from the FBI and the chief of police there, and they highlighted this valiant effort by uh, a local off-duty police officer. Uh, let's listen in a, a little bit to what they said uh, called this brave actions in subduing uh, this suspect. I'm told by the control room we don't have that uh, sought, but uh, I can tell you, Fred, they did highlight, uh, highlight this officer's incredible bravery, Jason Faulkner. We did reach out to this uh, officer here. He owns a business uh, in Minnesota. We've been unable to get in contact with him. He's unwilling to talk right now because this is an ongoing investigation. Uh, but uh, this is a person who uh, very clearly, as was uh, said by the mayor there, stopped what could have been 
a, a lot more injuries or even death. Fred. It was the mayor who during that press conference even said his actions uh, really should be training, training yeah. video uh, for everybody, particularly off duty, on duty police officers, what to do in a situation like that, that uh, he was truly heroic. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Nick Valencia. Appreciate it. All right. Joining me uh, right now on the phone is Abdirziak Behe, a Somali community leader in Minnesota. So, Mr. Behe, uh, thanks so much for being with me. You saw and heard this press conference of uh, Somali nationals and leaders there uh, talking about their concern about backlash, even though very little has been revealed uh, publicly about this suspect. What more can you tell us about your concerns, uh, the community's concerns, and the direction of this investigation? Uh, thank you for having me. Um, I really uh, feel that the community leaders there have done a wonderful job to express and articulate the feelings of the of the uh, community in St. Cloud and in Minnesota. There's a lot of concern that the actions of uh, evil actions of an individual uh, it might uh, again um, surround and impact. Uh, law-abiding citizens of the Somali American community. So I think that was a great job. And uh, again, I want to say again that we, our thoughts and our prayers are mm -hmm. with the victims. Okay. Have you had conversations with police? And if so, what's been said to you? I, I did have um, a communication with leaders there. I was unable to attend that. Um, and. Uh, the community leaders already identified uh, to the local media and to us that the name of the person is Dahir Adam. Uh, he did work for that security company, as the community leaders said, part-time. Uh, they were in communication with the parent of that young man who committed that atrocity. Um, so, yes, uh, he told his parents, according to the community leaders, that uh, he was going to the mall uh, earlier that evening of Saturday around 6 o'clock to buy iPhone 7. But nobody knows what happened except the uh, investigators and the law enforcement. Hmm. Okay, of course, we have not uh, confirmed the name of the suspect. Police have not publicly revealed it during that press conference that we did air uh, just about two hours or so ago. Now, talk to me, if you would, though, uh, about the community's concerns, as we heard in that press conference, about potential backlash uh, and how are people there in the community um, trying to get ahead of that potentially? Um, there is a huge amount of concern uh, from the community that um, that the actions, uh, evil actions of this individual, um, might uh, impact the whole community, uh, especially in that region of the state, uh, St. Cloud area. There were challenges, a lot of challenges uh, between the Somali American community and some few members of the uh, mainstream community. Um, they have done a lot of work, both sides, uh, the majority of the community, to come together in many times mm -hmm. to um, connect and work as a one united community. Um, but this action uh, uh, is felt as um, a tragedy, mm -hmm. not only a tragedy to those victims and families, but a tragedy that will um, uh, not, uh, uh, we, we don't hope, but it might mm -hmm. affect the lives of those Somali American community uh, that right. uh, and things might happen. Abdirazak Behe, thank you so much for your time and your sentiment. Truly appreciate it. Tom Fuentes, Art Roderick, uh, back with me now. Your initial reaction to uh, the Somali community coming out, um, showing their solidarity for the support of those who were injured, the family members, and at the same time uh, talking about their concerns about backlash. Tom. Well, you know, this is a really tragic story for these parents. They flee 15, 16 years ago from war-torn Somalia. They're fleeing radical Islam and warlords that had devastated their country. They come to America, become patriotic Americans, and their sons that they bring with them that at the time are four, five, six years old 
unbeknownst to them, get radicalized later, grow up to become yeah. jihadis, many of them mm -hmm. leaving and going to Somalia and joining al-Shabaab, and the parents didn't have a clue. And for them to come out like this immediately and show solidarity with their fellow Minnesotan residents, mm -hmm. I think it's just so moving and Art. important that they did that. Uh, Indeed, Tom's, Art. yeah, Tom's right. I mean, and they came out and condemned this right away. Exactly. That, that, that this individual is not, um, you know, did not do this benotes to the community. It's going to be interesting to see what his social media sites look like. I know we've been talking about this all day, but the but the fact that that you know he just told him I'm going to go buy an iPhone uh, at the mall and all of a sudden ends up doing this mm. is uh, you know there's got to be some trail somewhere yes. that this individual left behind. You just don't all of a sudden change your mind while you're going to buy mm -hmm. an iPhone six and stab right. nine people. We're going to leave it right there. Thank you so much, Art Roderick, Tom Fuentes. Thank you to all my guests today. I'm Frederica Whitfield. That's it for me. Thank you so much for being with me today from New York.